Today I've got five essential effects you need in Final Cut Pro. Now all of these elements are effects that come with Apple Motion, but for whatever reason are not published to Final Cut Pro natively. I'm gonna go through them one by one and show you every single parameter that you need to publish to Final Cut Pro. Now if you're not an Apple Motion user, don't worry, I've got you covered. All of the patrons in my Patreon community get access to my motion working files. That means you can snag these five effects if you join my Patreon community and install them on your own Final Cut app, but I always say this, you guys, Apple Motion is only $50 in the App Store. It is such a great value and it can totally elevate the look of your Final Cut Pro projects. If you need help getting started, I have a course for you, Motion Launchpad, available at jenjager.com. Now let's take a look at these effects in action. I've composited this shot, let's break it down. First of all, I've got a gradient overlay that's not two, but three colors. I've also created a tilt shift effect. I've got this 2D logo that I made look 3D and I added this bubble stroke around it and then I made it bounce in. Now I'm gonna keep all of these effects super simple. You don't have to be a motion expert to create them. Let's just dive right in. All right, let's take a look at our project browser in motion. Here are my settings. I typically work in 4K, 24 frames per second. So those are gonna be my project settings and my duration is going to be 10 seconds. And you want to make sure that you have this option selected final cut effect. These settings are gonna be the same for every one of the effects we build today. Okay, here's my effects project in motion. And I'm going to start by in the library, heading over to generators and finding the gradient. I'm going to drag it above my effect source in my project pane. Now, as you can see, we've got just two colors here in our gradient. Let's change that. I'm going to head on over to the inspector and under the generator tab, you can see my gradient here. Let's twirl down. And so you can see the two colors of our gradient represented with these two color tags. Let's add one more by clicking on the center of this line. And now you can see in my canvas that we for sure have three colors here. But I am so tired of looking at these blues. Let's change these default colors. So I am going to click on this first color tag, and then I'm gonna click on this color swatch here to bring up my spectrum. Now I could pick any color in my spectrum, but I already have a palette picked out. So I'm gonna click on over to palettes and let's make this first color, this hot pink. Let's select our second color tag and make that yellow. And let's select our third color tag and make that this teal. And now I'm gonna close up that colors menu. Now you can see looking at my canvas that my gradient isn't really gradual. I'd like to make it more gradual. So I'm gonna head down here in my inspector to the start and end values. And I'm going to make the start positive 500 and I'm going to make the end negative 500. And then I don't want this gradient to be so opaque. So let's head on over to our properties and under blend mode, I'm going to change this to soft light. Now we need to think about which settings we wanna be able to adjust once we apply this effect to a clip in Final Cut Pro. So we need to decide which parameters to publish. I do wanna be able to change the blend mode. So I'm going to hover my mouse on that line until I get this little drop down carrot and I'm going to select publish. Let's also publish the opacity. Let's go back to the generator tab and we need to publish each one of these colors. So I'm gonna select the color tag and I'm going to publish that. I'm gonna select the second color tag. I'm going to publish this and I'm gonna select the third color tag and publish that as well. I also wanna be able to modify the location of the gradient with this slider, so let's publish that. And I definitely wanna be able to publish the start and end values, so let's publish those as well. Now let's head to the top of our project pane where it says project and click on that. And then in the inspector under the project tab, you get a look at what this effect is gonna look like in your Final Cut Pro inspector once you apply it to a clip. So what I would like to do is close up these color sliders. So the whole thing just looks more tidy and now I'm ready to publish it to Final Cut Pro. So let's just head on up to file, save as, and I'm going to call this gradient overlay. Under my category, I already have a category called Gen's Effects, and that's where I wanna add it. This is gonna be the category in your effects browser where these effects live. If you don't have a category yet, or you wanna create a new one, just scroll down to the bottom and select New Category. Now I'm just going to hit the Publish button. And let's head on over to Final Cut Pro and take a look. In my effects browser is my gradient overlay. Let's apply it to my clip. 
And then as expected here in my video inspector are all the settings we published when we were in motion. So I can reposition my gradients by changing the start and end values. I could change the blend mode. Let's dial down the opacity a little bit, and then I can change the colors of these gradients by clicking on each color and selecting a new color from my spectrum. But I like the pink, so let's stick with that. All right, now let's move on to the tilt shift effect we're gonna create in Apple Motion. So once again, here we are in the project browser. I'm gonna use the exact same settings as before. Make sure you're selected on Final Cut Effect and hit Open. And so again, we're in this blank effects project. Let's select the effect source in our project pane. And this time we're gonna head on over to filters, blur, and gradient blur. And so what the gradient blur does is it gives you these on-screen controls where one point is in focus and then it gradiates to a blur on another point. Let's select that gradient blur in our project pane, head on over to the inspector and under the filters tab, you can see all of the different options you have. So what I'm going to do is reposition my on-screen controls like so. And then what I wanna do is publish these parameters. So I'm going to publish point one, publish point two. I'm gonna publish the amount. Let's publish the mix and let's check publish on screen controls. But I'm not gonna stop there. To create our tilt shift, we're gonna need another gradient blur. So I'm gonna right click on that gradient blur in my project pane and duplicate it. And then what I'm going to do is reposition my points on the copy so that not all of my points are in the exact same spot. So when I bring it into Final Cut Pro, I'm going to see two different on screen controls. And again, we need to publish all of those same elements on our copy. Let's head on over to the project pane, select project, and then select project in the inspector. And this is really important. You can see I have one set of points and a second set of points. We're going to rename the second set of points so we don't get confused in Final Cut. So I'm going to double click where it says point one. I'm going to rename this point three, and I'm gonna rename this one point four. And that's everything. Let's hit file, save as, and I'm going to call this tilt shift and let's save this to Jen's effects and publish it. Now back in Final Cut Pro under Jen's effects, there is my tilt shift. Let's apply that to my clip and I'm going to reposition my on-screen controls and play with the amounts until I get the look I'm after. Wasn't that simple? I promised you that anyone, even a beginner, would be able to publish these effects to Final Cut Pro. But what if you want something more complex? Why don't you check out the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array. Motion Array is a one-stop shop for creators like you and me. They have everything we need to complete our video projects like royalty-free music, stock video, graphics, but also tons of templates for Final Cut Pro. Whether you're looking for fresh title templates, transitions, effects, or generators, Motionary has everything. Check out these cute bubble letters I am obsessed with right now, and of course I got them on Motion Array. Whenever I'm feeling a little stuck on a creative project, I love to open Motion Array and see what's new, and they're constantly adding new content, so everything's always on trend. And there's something to suit every taste, so if you're looking for something really clean looking and modern, they definitely have that. Or if you're interested in something a little more splashy, you'll find that too. Or maybe you're just looking for some new LUTs. Everyone on my team loves Motion Array because when we're grinding out content for clients, it's so easy to impress them with one of the templates that we snag from Motion Array and they never know that it wasn't custom created just for them. If there's one site you need to subscribe to as a Final Cut Pro user, it has got to be Motion Array. It truly is a one-stop shop for editors. Thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. I will link to it down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. All right, now let's draw our attention back to our project and look at this 2D logo. I'm gonna show you how to make it look 3D. Back in our project browser, again, we're gonna select Final Cut Effects. And again, we're gonna select the effect source in our project pane. Let's head down to Filters, Stylize, and select Extrude. This one's gonna be pretty simple. I'm just gonna head on over to the Inspector window. And for this one, I'm just gonna go down the line and publish all of the parameters. And make sure we check the Publish OSC box. That's gonna give us those on-screen controls in Final Cut Pro. One other thing we need to do is we published the extrude style, which is shading, but there's another option here for gradient. So if we wanna be able to change the color of our gradient, if we're set to the gradient extrude style, we need to do the same thing we did with the gradient overlay, which is to select each color tag and publish those. And I'm just gonna leave these as black and white. Let's keep it simple. All right, now let's head on over to our project pane, select project at the very top, and then under the project tab in our inspector, this is what we're going to see in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna collapse 
these colors up and I'm going to switch the gradient back to shading. So that'll be our default when we apply to Final Cut Pro. Again, let's just go to file, save as, and I'm just going to keep the name of this as extrude. Let's go back to Final Cut and I'm going to add my logo overlay on top of my B-roll shot. Let's grab that extrude effect we just created. And here are all of our controls. I'm going to use the on-screen controls to modify the angle and distance of our extrusion. And yeah, now it looks 3D. Now let's add that fun bubbly stroke around this logo. Again, select our effect source in the project pane, head on over to filters, border, and select stroke. Let's head on over to the inspector. Let's publish the color, the color selector, the width, the position, the offset, threshold, fade inside and outside, fade width, fade fall off. Let's publish the blend mode and the mix. Now let's go back up to stroke type and select gradient, twirl down on the gradient and publish these colors. All right, again, let's head up to the top of our project pane, select the project line in the inspector, select the project tab. I'm going to change the stroke type back to color and I'm going to twirl up on our gradient color options. And let's rename some of these colors so we don't get confused in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to rename this first one solid stroke. I'm going to select this color and I'm going to name it gradient stroke one and the next one gradient stroke two. File, save as, and I'm going to call this one just stroke. And in Final Cut Pro, let's add that stroke to our logo. I'm going to change the color of it to this green and I'm going to play with the offset to give it that real bubbly looking outline. And I could thicken it up a hair if I wanted to. And by the way, you guys, if you reordered these effects in your inspector, you would get totally different looks. So if I bring the stroke above the extrude, then my stroke is 3D as well. Now let's get to our last effect. We're going to make this logo bounce in. Select it on the effect source. This time we're going to go up to behaviors, parameter, and overshoot. And then here in the inspector window under the behaviors tab, all the way at the bottom on the apply to line, let's drop down to properties, transform, scale and all. Let's change the start value to negative 100. And I just want to show you what's going on here. It's a very slow bounce up over the duration of our 10 seconds. I'm going to cute my playhead to the beginning of my timeline again, and let's change the end offset to 200. By increasing that value, our bounce happens faster. If I decrease the value, bounce happens a little slower. So the values here actually go in the opposite way that you would think. I'm going to reset this back to 200 and let's start publishing some parameters here. Let's leave start and end value alone and unpublished. Let's publish the ramp duration and the cycles, the acceleration and the end offset. Now let's head back up to the top of our project pane to project, project in the inspector window, and let's draw attention to this end offset setting. The proper way to do this would be to create what's called a rig in Apple Motion so that you could bring the slider values up to increase the duration instead of bringing them down like I just showed you. But I promised you this was going to be a super simple tutorial anyone could follow, so we're not going to get into rigging. Instead, what we're going to do is rename this end offset and give us a little bit of a hint as to how the slider works. So I'm going to call it duration, but then in parentheses, I'm going to type in reduce to slow down and let's save this effect as bounce in and publish it and now in Final Cut Pro let's drop that onto our logo and you can see it bounces in in the inspector window if I wanted to slow it down I could dial down that value and the action happens slower if I want it to go even faster I'm just going to grab those numbers and bring them even higher and it goes really fast I'm going to bring it back down to 200 where I had it and if I want to make it more bouncy, just dial down the ramp duration. Now I'm going to take that whole logo with all the effects applied and I'm going to bring it down to the lower right corner. So our Ferris wheel is still the center of the action. And there you go, guys, five super simple effects that you should be publishing from motion to Final Cut Pro. Now remember, if you really don't want to get into motion, you can snag all five of these effects by joining my Patreon community. If you like what you saw today and you want to know more about motion, check out my course Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. If you want another tutorial about publishing effects from motion to Final Cut Pro, check out this one here on vignettes. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone who watches to the end. I'll see you again.